Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Upper Room Fellowship of Jesus Christ Sabbath message. I'm Pastor Rufus, and I have with me here Sister Joanna. And Sister Joanna will be starting this uh, service with a song, this presentation, that is. <coughs> and uh, But before we begin with her and, and the song, let's go to our Father in prayer. Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day. And we thank you for the, the privilege you've given to Joanna and I to present this message to those who are listening, those here today. And we pray that you'll just bless everything that comes out of our mouths. And you'll just bless this message. Bless to hear us, Lord. Put your spirit on their ears as well as your spirit on my mouth. And cause me to speak the words that you desire them to hear and that they will receive the words that you desire for them, Lord. And we just thank you for all the things that you're doing in our lives. And we give you all the honor, all the praise, and all the glory for everything that you've done. In the name of Jesus, amen. amen. Sister Joanna. <clears throat> Dearest Lord Jesus, ruler of all nations, O Thou of God and man the Son, Thee will I cherish, Thee will I honor, Thou art my glory, joy, and crown. Fair is the sunshine, fair is still the moonlight, and all the twinkling starry host. Jesus shines brighter. Jesus shines purer than all the angels heaven can boast. Beautiful Savior, Lord of all nations, Son of God and Son of man, glory and honor, praise, adoration, now and forevermore be thine. Jesus, my Savior, Jesus, the Lord of the nations, you're the Son of God and Son of Man. Glory and honor, praise, adoration, now and forevermore is yours. Amen. <clears throat> Thank you, Sister Joanna. And now we'll go to our good news message for today. And we'll begin here with the introduction. Today's Sabbath message reveals the inclination of the heart on to follow in God's ways. This adapts attributes that he prepares for those who fear him. With this, he causes us to hate evil, receive wisdom, attain freedom from pride, arrogance, and other forms of wickedness. In addition to the benefits above, the word also reveals, reveals the fear of the Lord alone's life. Fear of the Lord finds its traits and instills them within. This bonds us to him, which fills our, fills our lives with all the blessings he holds for us. And that is the introduction. 
And now well, let's look at some definitions for this word uh, fear as used in, in, in the biblical text. And we'll begin with the Greek uh, uh, definition of fear and from the Strong's Concordance. And that word, Greek word is phobio. And uh, it's, it's uh, translated in Greek as to put to flight, to terrify, to terrify, frighten. Now, one thing I want to point out here is that these Greek, def these Greek and Hebrew definitions are not always uh, absolutely identical to the words that are used for these words in, in the biblical text. Uh, because uh, there are very, many variations of def definition to both the Greek and the Hebrew words. And, and so the biblical texts often don't use the words you'll see here on the screen. And, uh, and notice the original word of uh, phobio is phobio my. And that's because in the Greek, this, this word is in the passive voice. That is, and what the passive voice means is that the subject is not doing the action, but the object is, is causing the action. That is, in, in the case of fear, if we talk about the fear of God, God is the one who would be causing the fear. And it's and because of our nature or what's what's in our hearts, God will will cause that fear, and that fear is not fear as we know it, fear of him, fear that something is bad is going to happen. But fear is, is, is really an adulation of God, reverence to God. Is, and that is, we fear God because what we really fear is we fear possibly not being in, in his um. <clears throat> In, in his ways or in his not having his love. We fear not having the things that God has to offer us because he has, he gives us everything in life. He is our life. And so we fear not attaining the, the behavior or not having in our hearts that which God is. And, and, and that's that is the fear. Fear is actually reverence. And so let's let's look down here at the usage in the Greek of the word. Obio, and I fear, dread, reverence. Now we use that reverence. It's, it's just, just respect for who God is and all his wonderful attributes and all his, his amazing grace and his love and, and, and his power. And he has the power to just wipe us off the earth. Of course, he, he, was, he does, doesn't normally do that unless there is a case to where some is is is, is uh, had incurred behavior that he wants to do that and and he he can do that and so let's move on to the um, Hebrew definition Strong's Concordance Yara fear and uh, it's a feminine noun Yara 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 is the uh, Hebrew uh, pronunciation. Definition it says a fear, and then the N, notice the NASB translation that is the New American Standard Bible translation, and and notice how they have translated uh, the word as awesome once, extremely once, fear thirty five times, and reverence five times, fearing one time. And so those uh, that gives you some idea of how the definition varies in different um, Bibles and different versions of the Bible and uh, in different places in the Bible. And so let's move on to our text now. In our first uh, few verses, we'll talk about obey the Lord and prosper. And we'll begin here in Deuteronomy 6. And we'll read verse one and two. And of course, uh, <clears throat> and this is, well, this, this will be Moses' uh, activity here, uh, Moses' words to the people. Now, this is the commandment, the statutes and the judgments which the Lord your God has commanded 
me to teach you so that you may do them in the land where you are going over to take possession of it so that you, your son and your grandson will fear the Lord your God to keep all his statutes and his commandments, which I command you all the days of your life that your days may be prolonged. Now, note this. Here, Moses is commanding the people to keep God's commandments, his statutes, and his judgments. And, and you got to fear not being able to do that or not doing that because that's not a good thing. Bad things will happen. And there, therefore, the, the fear, that's that's the idea of fear. You want to fear that you're going to miss out on something wonderful that God has for you. And that's what God has because he's preparing these people to go into the promised land. And he's going to take care of all their needs there. And so if they can follow, if they can keep his commandments and his judgments, then they know that they're going to be good. And that's their, their fear that somehow they won't do that, and that is that that is the fear. So they have reverence for him, his commandment, and his judgments, and and for walking in his ways. This is also a means to walk in his ways, because the the, the way to walk is in the commandments and the judgments and his word for us. Okay, let's go to Deuteronomy uh, six, and we'll read verses thirteen through fifteen. You shall fear only the Lord your God, and you shall worship him and swear by his name. You shall not follow other gods, any of the gods of the peoples who surround you. For the Lord your God who is in the midst of you is a jealous God, so follow him. Or else the anger of the Lord your God will be kindled against you, and he will wipe you off the face of the earth. Now, and that sounds like a bad thing. God is just such a mean God who's willing to just wipe us off the face of the earth. However, if you if you really think and think about this, He's given us everything that we need to have everything that we want. And the only way that He would wipe you off the face of the earth is that you had you didn't even try to do any of this stuff. Even if you couldn't do it, you could ask him and he will help you. That's the kind of God we serve. However, if you just despise his word, then he despises you. And, 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 and in that case, he's to be feared. But in most cases, he's to be cherished and loved because that's who he is. He is love. And he gives you his attributes through your fear of him. And, and, and again, not, not fear of punishment, but fear of not being able to do the things you know you should be doing and do the things that God desires you to do. And God is such a loving, graceful, humble person. You want to do these things. Amen. And so let's, let's go to Deuteronomy 10 and we'll read Verses 12 through 13. Now, Israel, what does the Lord your God require of you? To fear the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways and love him, and to serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, and to keep the Lord's commandments and his statutes, which I am commanding you today for your good. Amen. As And just to repeat some of what I said earlier, when we keep his commandments and his statutes, that is tantamount to fearing him, fearing not keeping his commandments. And in, in the last statement that for your good or for our good, we do these things for his people. And so some comments on what we've read so far. Fear, serve, walk in his ways only. That is his ways only. 
Okay, Moses taught the commandments, statutes, and judgments of the Lord that the people may keep them in the land he gave them to possess. In like manner, those of us here today must keep the words the Lord has given, that we might walk in his ways and serve him in the society he gave us. He, he, he gave us this, where he placed us here. This is our promised land. Uh, and the last statement here, or the second to last, he imbues us with his love as we manifest it to those around us and in our midst. For this, he promises to prolong our days. <coughs> and the Lord does promise to prolong the days of those who fear him. However, the opposite is also true. For the wicked, for those who does not fear him, he, he promises to cut their days short. Amen. Okay, God's amazing attributes and principles. Okay, and Psalm 19.9 <coughs> says, the fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true. They are righteous all together. His judgments are true. And so he wants us to keep that. And they are righteous. So if we keep his judgments, then we're, we're prone to become righteous. Amen. And we'll go to Psalm 27, verses 1 and 2 reads, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Should fear him. The Lord is the defense of my life. Whom should I dread? Not the Lord. When evildoers came upon me to devour my flesh, my adversaries and my enemies, they stumbled and fell. Fell. The Lord protects his own. And we have some comments. His righteous judgment bring fear. Okay, the truth of God's judgments bring righteousness. Scripture declares they are righteous all together. He is our light and salvation. For these and many other gracious attributes, we fear him. For these and many other divine attributes, we fear him. Our reverence and fear for him sit squarely upon his righteous judgments and the wonderful gifts he bestows upon those who are obedient to his word. Amen. And that obedience to his words is tantamount to fearing him. Because when we are, the word has everything that we need to follow him and to be righteous. And, and, and so therefore, we, we need to fear of not being able to do that or somehow not attaining that. That, that is to fear. Fear of God draws him closer to us. Amen. That's what we want. We want to be drawn closer to God. And Proverbs 8.13 says, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Wow. The Lord hates evil. And so when we fear the Lord, we... we uh, Excuse me. We manifest that attribute that he possesses. Okay. I arrogance, the evil way, in addition to, I said earlier, evil. And the perverted mouth, I hate. And so, again here, the, the word gives us all the things that we need to do be in this loving relationship with God. And, 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 uh, and he wraps it all up as fear in him. All these things that we're talking about. He hates evil. Okay. And so when we manifest that attribute and, and uh, pride and also evil, and, and which includes pride, arrogance, 
evil way and the perverted mouth God hates. So all those things are evil to the Lord. And, and therefore, those things <clears throat> ought to be rebuffed by us, his people. And moving on, verse 9, verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Amen. Now, that verse here, note, to fear the Lord. Okay? What, that, what did the, the scriptures say early? When we keep his statute, when we keep his judgments, when we keep his commandments, those things express the fear of the Lord. And those things are the beginning of wisdom. And, and moving to that next line, and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. So once one is wise, he is able to process and obtain more knowledge. And that's, that's understanding, having knowledge of God, uh, the, enough knowledge to know how to fear him, fear not being true to his word or not understanding his word or not keeping his word and walking in his ways. That's part of it also. We've got to remember that fearing the Lord is tantamount to walking in his ways. Move on to the next verse, Proverbs 10, verse 27. The fear of the Lord prolongs life. The years of the wicked will be shortened. Amen to that. Uh, I mean, we don't wish bad on anything, but <clears throat> we want to have the fear of the Lord. And, uh, well, I guess here the wicked has to fend for themselves. And, yes, if we can turn someone's life around and, and point them toward the Lord, that would, the fear of, of the Lord has an answer for that. Uh, I'm sure there's word that teaches us how to do that. And we can turn this wicked uh, soul from hell and back to the Lord is where his life won't be short and his life will be extended. Because if we can bring them to a point to the point where they fear the Lord, then and we've 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 done our, we've done a great service of the Lord. And moving on to the next verse, Proverbs 15, verse 33. The fear of the Lord is the instruction for wisdom. Okay, now we, we had another uh, rendition of this statement. It was the beginning of wisdom. It is the instruction for wisdom. Okay, and so, and we know as Moses said, to obey, to keep his statutes, to keep his commandments and to walk in his ways, we do those things then we are learning wisdom because that is the instruction for wisdom. And it goes on to say, and before honor comes humility. God loves humility. Uh, he, he loves those who are humble toward him. Who are, he loves the contrite heart. He honors those who practice these things. Amen? Amen. Amen. Proverbs 19, verse 23. The fear of the Lord leads to life, so that one may sleep satisfied, untouched by evil. Amen. Amen. Now note that verse, the fear of the Lord leads to life. Now we, we know that because the Lord gives life. He loves those who, who are obedient to him and and who are righteous, and those who keep his commandments and his statutes and walk in his ways, he, he deems righteous. They're righteous. Those who are faithful, faithful toward him, faithful to his word, those are righteous. Uh, Abraham, Noah, all the great men of old, the patriarchs and, and, and the prophets, Moses, and Isaiah, 
they they all feared the Lord. And might I say, uh, needless to say, they were untouched by evil. Okay, fear of God attracts good, repels evil. The Proverbs above clearly reveal that the fear of God brings us into agreement with his values. That is, he opposes things which he hates and embraces things he deems good. We are in harmony with the good things that God holds for us. That is to say, we embrace wisdom and understanding. He also prolongs the life of those who fear him. In contrast, the years of the wicked will be shortened. Fear of the Lord also brings humility, which leads to honor. Amen. Amen. Amazing. Those all those proverbs that we read in one line is there from the God about God and his fear, fear in him and, and what it brings, it's it's really loaded. And we can see, see it here. And this is not all of it, but God is, he knows how to give us good things. He knows how to bring good to us. And with these, these simple practices of obedience and faithfulness toward him, that is obeying his commandments and statutes and, and uh, as Moses taught, um, fearing God and walking in his ways. And when we walk in God's ways, that is tantamount to being more like God. And, and uh, we'll, we'll see this later in the text, but last week our message was follow me. And we'll, we will see, let's wait until we get there because we have a passage that's gonna uh, uh, address that a little later. So right now, mercy and truth brings atonement. Okay, Proverbs 16, 6, the scripture reads, by mercy and truth, atonement is made for wrongdoing. By mercy and truth. Okay, those who maintain, possess mercy and truth, it will be atoned for his sin whatever he did wrong, okay? And by the fear of the Lord, one keeps away from evil. The fear of the Lord, and we've talked about this over and over and over <laughs> many times, keeps us from evil, opposes evil, because fear of the Lord is another way of saying uh, fear of the Lord or assessing whether we have fear of the Lord are we, are we more like God? When we walk in his ways, and that's what that means. When we keep his commandments, when we keep his statutes, when we keep his judgments, then we are more like him. God hates evil. So that in itself will keep us away from evil. When we, we, we love and we we uh, adapt the, the uh, or manifest, I should say, the attributes of God, then he causes us to practice his ways, to walk in his ways, to love like he loved, and to stay away from evil. Amen. Amen. Proverbs 19, 23. The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life by which one may avoid the snares of death. Now, fountain of life. What is a fountain of life? Well, there, there are many texts that speak of the of fountain of life. Um, we know back in, in the ancient times, the, the patriarchs, they, do, they dug wells. And oftentimes down in, in deepest part of those well, the water was moving because once you reach the water table, water is flowing free underground. And if you have a deep enough well, you'll find that. Now that water is referred to as living water. And now because it's rooted in something the patriarchs did, which is where our lives are rooted to a great extent in, in what uh, 
Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and, and Moses, Joseph, but they, they live through their life was they had to dig wells to have good water to drink. And, and because the, the clean water was the deepest down in, in the ground because the earth is a natural filter. And therefore we, we, we call it living water. First, because it moved, but but there is an analogy. Christ, our Lord, is uh, water is is uh, symbolic of spirit, God's spirit, and God's spirit lives in us, just like it. Water brings life to us, to our bodies. We can't live without water, and we really can't live without the spirit of God. Amen. Okay, now. Here, a branch from Jesse delights in the fear of the Lord. Now, who's Jesse? Well, Jesse was the son of Obad. Oh, I can't remember his name, but his, his mother's name was Ruth. And so Ruth, and who met Boaz, and they had... David's, who came to be David's, I mean, Jesse's father. And of course, Jesse is, was David's father. But, and, but this whole statement here is based on a line of, of, of descendants that began, this one we, when it goes back to Ruth and it extends to Jesus. And so here, the branch that we are talking about here will be Jesus. And so I'm going to give that away right away, and then we'll go in and read the text and let the text teach us just the rest of this. Okay, Isaiah 11, verses 1 through 3. Then a shoot will spring from the stem of Jesse, and a branch from his roots will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding spirit of counsel and strength, spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. What is that? And fear of the Lord. All these things was upon, uh, will be upon this branch. And notice the next verse. And he will delight in the fear of the Lord. And he will not judge by what his eyes see, but make decisions by what his is here. And I, which means he, he will judge by what's in his heart. What God puts in him, what's, what comes from God, not by what he sees or hears, not by what the world brings, but what is in his heart through his Lord. Amen. And so let's, let's have some more comments about the branch from Jesse. In Isaiah's prophecy, the branch who was to come from the stem of Jesse would possess all the qualities and attributes the psalmist, those we read previously, reveals for those who fear the Lord. Among them, we find wisdom, understanding, faithfulness, and righteousness, counsel, and strength. And the key to it all, the fear of the Lord. In regard to this, the text emphasizes he will delight in the fear of the Lord. Now, this branch here, and we know this is none other than Jesus Christ. He delights in the fear of the Lord. He came and called his disciples with the glorious assertion, follow me. He desires for all of us to delight in the fear of the Lord. Follow him. And then the disciples, we follow the disciples. They teach us. Uh, we, we, we read the, their words, we, their legacy, and that teaches us. So he, they follow Jesus, call them, and, and of course, God calls us to them and to his word. And therefore, here we are. And, and so this, this, uh, 
this thought, this phrase of fearing the Lord, fear of the Lord, it, it, it comes from good company. It's uh, found in good company, I should say. Moses taught it, uh, the Lord, uh, Isaiah preached it, uh, prophesied it, and Jesus, Jesus carried it. He was born with it. And he commanded those, his, those whom he taught to follow him, to be like him. And he passed his word along. And now we're here. And I'm here to say, let's be like them. Amen. God comes to see. The crew feared the Lord. Okay. Now. This story here, just a few lines to this story, but it comes from the story of Jonah. Now, and we know that story. The Lord wanted Jonah to go to Nin Nineveh, yeah. And uh, Jonah, for some reason, didn't want to go here and want to go preach to him. He, he didn't like the people of Nineveh. He didn't think God should save them. And so he didn't want to go and preach there. So he got on a ship. He found a ship going somewhere else to, to I believe, Tarsus. And, uh, and, and so there he was, uh, avoiding going where God wanted to send him. And so for that reason, uh, God proceeded to, to, to deter him, to stop him. And so that, that ship was being washed to and fro in, in the water and, 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 and the crew didn't know what was going on. And uh, so they were saying everyone should pray to their God. See, they all back then, they all have different gods except for the ones who worship the God of Israel. And, and, uh, and at this time, Jonah was down in the, in the bottom of the ship sleeping. And so they, and once they found out he was sleeping, they said, what are you doing? How can you sleep at a time like this? We're about to perish. The ship is going to and fro, and the wind is just taking us anywhere we want to go. Uh, get up and pray. And, and uh, so anyway, they, they went and they cast lots to find out who had, was causing this problem because they knew that this wasn't normal and there had to be some force that was causing it. And they, they took uh, lots and it fell to Jonah. And so now Jonah was in a lot of trouble with this crew here and the, sh the wind was blowing them and they tried to even use oars to pedal themselves back to shore, but the wind was too strong and they couldn't overcome it. So they just, they knew that they were gonna die. And uh, well, they, they felt that they would, you know, die. So they, uh, went to Jonah and then they asked him once they found out that he was the cause of it, the God that the Lord was mad at him. Uh, and, 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 uh, he told them, they asked him, what could they do to stop this? And Jonah told them, frankly, just throw me overboard because he knew the Lord was doing this and he would die with them. But if they threw him overboard, at least they'd save their own lives. And so, that brings us to the, to the verse that I'm about to read, brothers and sisters. Then they took Jonah and threw him overboard. And the raging sea grew calm. At this, the men greatly feared the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice to the Lord and made vows to him. Amen. Now, wow, what a story here. Now, these men here. They weren't God's people. They weren't, uh, up until this point, they knew very little about. They knew that John, uh, Jonah worshiped the God of Israel, and they had heard of the God of Israel, and they knew they had heard many great things about the God of Israel. And but but now they had seen this wonderful thing because when they uh, threw him overboard, and and the sea just went uh, uh, calm and. And they thought, well, wow, this God is an amazing God. And they feared God. They feared him. That was enough for them. And they, 
And uh, if, if there was an end to that story, it would be something like they all came to, to the Lord. But, uh, but that's, that's the story of Jonah. And we know the rest of this story is about Jonah himself, not about the crew on that ship. Amen. So we'll go to fear the one who holds your soul. And this comes from Luke. This is Jesus speaking. He said, now I say to you, my friends, do not be afraid of those who kill the body. After that, have nothing more that they can do. But I will warn you whom to fear. Fear the one who, after he has killed someone, has the power to throw that person into hell. Yes, I tell you, fear him. Amen. Fear the Lord, brothers and sisters. Fear the Lord. And that brings us to the conclusion. Okay, first passage here would be from Hebrew 11, verse seven. And it says, it goes back to Noah. By faith, Noah being warned by God about things not yet seen in reverence, that is in fear. Reverence is, is another word for fear in the Bible. Prepared an ark, for the salvation of his household, by which he condemned the world, became an heir of the righteousness, which is according to faith. Amen. Amen. Was his reverence or his fear of God that places him with God, and it is, and it is the source of his righteousness, fear of God, that obedience. Okay, 1 Peter 1, verses 14 through 17. As obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in er uh, ignorance. Just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. For it is written, be holy, because I am holy. Since you call on the Father who judges each person's work, excuse me, impartially, live out your life, I'm sorry, live out your time as foreigners here in reverent fear. Amen. Well, this is the two words they put them together this time, reverence and fear, and they both basically mean the same thing as they're used in the Bible. Reverent fear, have reverence for God. Have a reverence of a reverence so great that you fear not having enough of it. Amen. Amen. That's that's my interpretation of that. Those two words together. Okay, and now we go to Philippians two and read verses twelve and thirteen, and it says, "So then, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, now much more in my absence." Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who is at work in you, both to desire and to work for his good pleasure. Mm -hmm. Amen. And fear and trembling will get you there. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, Lord, we... We thank you for this message today. Lord, we, we just thank you for teaching us how to fear, what it means to fear, what you do for those who fear you. We thank you, Lord, for this message, Lord. We thank you for this Sabbath day that you've given us. We pray that you just <clears throat> give us rest. Give us rest, give us your love, give us your peace. And just help us to press forward, fear, fearing you and walking in your ways, Lord. And we thank you for this, again, for this message. And we thank you for everybody who's present that will hear this message, Lord. And we just we give you all the honor, all the praise and all the glory in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen.